So, very fast, thrombophilia. Uh, thrombo means I'm now forming a thrombus. I'm afraid of thromba, okay? And, and uh, uh, there's a, another German name, very famous, and that is Virchow, Virchow. So Virchow, a uh, famous guy, uh, you know the Virchow triad. What, what, about, what, what is it all about, the triad? It's always about a vessel wall, always a blood flow which is decreased, and a concentration of the blood. Okay, and these three together, and if there's one more, as some last day, you will form a thrombus. Very important stuff, very general. So, all of you listen. If I'm going to have DVT now, what could be the cause? What could be with a vessel wall, for example? It's damaged by what? What process? Uh, atherosclerosis. <coughs> Now, um, that's on purpose, and uh, I'm always doing it only to, again, remind you, I just said it normally, but very fast, I said DVT, and you know why you cannot say atherosclerosis? No, no one ever described atherosclerosis on veins, remember that, no one ever. Atherosclerosis is only, only I, I make, make this trick on purpose so that you all understand still, someone could trick you during the exam sometimes, I don't know why. Uh, remember, arteriosclerosis is a general term which tells you your arteries are getting harder, okay? And the most common cause of this is atherosclerosis. So just only remember, atherosclerosis is connected only with arteries. It's because of the high pressure system. We see it only over there, not in veins. But, Virchow triad works for both for arteries or for veins, it doesn't matter. Only in veins, watch out, don't say atherosclerosis, okay? It could be phlebitis, for example, or whatever, okay? But not atherosclerosis. Repeat, I'm repeating, it's not stressed enough in the books, okay? I stress it in those papers I send some time to students, but uh, I don't know why it is like this. So, but anyways, uh, still... Uh, but, uh <clears throat> the way I understand atherosclerosis is below the endothelium, um, and not like it's it's like a, it's like a cholesterol plug and not like a thrombus that. No 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 no. No no no. Atherosclerosis is a process which initiates the formation of a thrombus, which activates the thrombocytes. The, the, the see it as that the vessel artery wall is not smooth enough. There's a there is a mess on it, and this activates the thrombocyte. Okay, yeah. But arteries—that's important. Atherosclerosis only arteries. But anyways, what I want you—and this is important—all of you, if you could focus for a few, few more minutes. If we look at the thrombi in arteries, and if, if you now imagine arteries, imagine coronary artery, carotid artery, middle cerebral artery, and you should imagine that the nasty guys in this game are mainly vessel walls, so atherosclerosis, or whatever with the vessel wall, and specially activated thrombocytes. These two guys are the main players, okay? In contrast with the vein thrombus, because over there the main player is the decreased blood flow and hypercoagulable state. So, so if your blood is concentrated, if you don't drink enough and you sit somewhere like in a plane to Australia, you're gonna have DVT. Okay, you never, you never ever sat so long. You're sitting for one and a half hour, and you, you know you want to move and go out. So you never ever were. If you didn't fly before, you were never ever forced to sit so long. So watch out. So, but why I, I'm stressing this because also the therapy is that's what you're aiming. If you're having a thrombus in arteries, as we talked about the heart and brain, you are blocking their activation. You're you're giving aspirin and clopidogrel. If you're having a DVT, you're blocking the cascades, so you're giving heparin warfarin, okay? Watch out, in heart, of course, there's an AFib, but it's more like a blood flow, and it's atriums, okay? But that's sort of an exception, that's where you give warfarin, of course, for heparin, there's warfarin, okay? Yeah? And I will just mention, because we have no time, but, so, but this is a general review, Every, everyone understands it. It doesn't, again, work ultimately, but this is the way how you should look at it, okay? And the, the, the things I want to tell you are, are only few, and those are inherited diseases. This ones you should know. And 
All of them which I will mention inherited thrombophilias, that you are born and you are prone for forming a thrombi. And the, the, the thing you should look at it, is it going to be more a thrombus in general in, in arteries or in veins? What do you think? Inherited thrombophilias are more likely connected with veins. Okay? So, and remember, I'll tell you four and then we'll go. And then I will tell you one more message. Home, okay? So, one, two, three, four. And one over here, although it's not as common, decreased antithrombin. If you're going to be born and you're going to have decreased levels of antithrombin, you're going to form thrombi. This is not so rare, I know, and compared to, I don't know, hemophilia C. This is opposite, of course. You're form forming a uh, uh, thrombi. But why I'm mentioning it, guess what's not going to work in your case? You're, form you're, you're having a DVT because of this. They're, you're going to come into the hospital, they're going to give you heparin, and it won't work because heparin uses antithrombin as the, the effect. Heparin speeds up the activity of antithrombin, uh, originally antithrombin 3, and that's why it's not working. So think of this. And then also you can have inherited decrease of protein C and S, C and S. Okay? These are rare, like 1% of DVTs or whatever. But, and this is for, for, for Caucasians, okay, over here. Most common uh, thrombophilia we know about, 5% of us have the mutated gene as a heterozygous, and this is the Leiden, okay? So Leiden, 5 mutation, this is the most common uh, thrombophilia inherited. And basically heterozygous, they have seven times higher risk of DVT. If you're homozygote, guess what? 80 times. 80 times increased risk. And I will still have some marks on OCPs for this. But, so light and mutation, very common. The factor 5 is mutated and it's not, it's not degradable by protein CNS. That's why you, you form thrombi. And then still you can have the G20210 mutation A. This is a the disease is named like this. Sometimes it's in it's some tests. It's one one percent of Caucasians again have it. And again, they form thrombine. But the, the the reason is this is a it's a it's a nucleotide exchange at this place, and it's an exchange in promoter. Promoter, which increase the, the mutation increased the, the production of per thrombin. So these people, there should be H, these people have increased levels of thrombin and that's why they have increased risk of thrombus formation, okay? And last one, remember also you can have decreased plasminogen. So you can have, again, this is rare, but you can have increased, again, risk for thrombus formation for DVT. But, still, uh, uh, the most common cause of acquired is anti-phospholipid anti, uh, syndrome, okay? And this is when you, again, it's autoimmune uh, problem. You're forming uh, autoimmune bodies against phospholipids. Uh, if you heard about lupus anticoagulant, you can have these uh, uh, immunoglobulins as well, and uh, anti-cardiolipins, for example, and uh, these activate your thrombocytes and also thrombin. And this is the most common cause of acquired thrombocytophilia. And watch out, it's for, for arteries as well as for venous thrombos, okay? You have risk for infarction and for DVT increase, and pretty a lot, okay? We don't have any time more to talk about uh, Specific, well, just to, you all know, for arterial thrombus, atherosclerosis, just last minute, atherosclerosis, uh, endocarditis, you can find it yourself. With veins, uh, immobilization, age itself, if you, uh, immobilization is, remember, nephrotic syndrome as well. Nephrotic syndrome, you are losing antithrombin through, through, through kidneys. But last common on DVT, and that's OCP. OCPs, very dangerous. This is OCP. Oral contraceptives. OCPs. 
So, uh, two girls over here and two some boys, maybe, I don't know. Anyways, OCPs. Well, uh, two boys which are forcing their girls to be on OCPs. Really seriously, uh, in terms of, well, let's say, Trumbull's formation, if there is a, this is a serious message, if there is a young girl having a, a DVT and then pulmonary embolism, she is on OCP. It's like one way. Okay, it's obvious. If there is a young girl flying a plane somewhere and having a DVT, she had OCP to it, okay? So, so that is obviously severely increased risk, okay? And nonetheless, also you're changing totally your original circuits over here, okay? Your os oscillation of your neurons or whatever with OCP. So, so it's really, and also you're not protecting yourself the way you should, okay? So, so everything is against OCP. And the message home, okay? If you're a heterozygote Leiden, and this is serious, if you're a Leiden and you, you're having, and 5% of you are, if, and you're using OCP plus OCP, you're gonna increase it to 20 times. If you're a homozygote plus OCP, this is 20 times risk. Over here, 100. 100 times increased risk. If you're a protrombin, uh, it's an OCP plus OCP. It's again 20 times or 50 times. But watch out. If you, if you are a, let's say, a, what do you call it? If, if, you're, if you're doing triathlon, so you have either Leiden or, or, or the G20210 mutation. So that's one, one sport. Then, uh, second sport is OCP, and third is smoking, okay? So then, at least with us, this, I found that you're going to increase it like 250 times increase risk of TBT. So with this very, let's say, um, uh, not nice message for some of you, okay, I'm going to end it up here. So, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.